Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and boy, do we ever have something exciting to take a look at today. Probably the most exciting Hammond Collection figure to come yet, or at least as far as I'm concerned, because we've got ourselves the Carnotaurus. As you can see, we've got some pretty nice box art here with a shot of the figure. I will say, I think the figure looks a little bit different compared to the promotional images. When you see it here, it just looks a little smoother as far as the application of the paint. When you see it here, it doesn't look quite as smooth or natural, but it's probably going to look pretty darn nice once we take it out of the packaging anyway, because again, it's Hammond Collection. It usually does. But you can see the box is pretty much your standard as far as what we normally get for the Hammond Collection. Just a little bit bigger because this is an entirely new size range over here on the side, Hammond Collection. If you take a look at the other side you've got a nice shot of the Carnotaurus with the head turned and letting out a vocalization up here on the top just your standard stuff and then here on the back you can yet again see some more images of the Carnotaurus a nice shot of the glass eye as well as again another shot of the Carnotaurus with its head turned and then down here you can actually see some other figures that will be coming out from the Hammond collection very soon as we've got ourselves Owen Grady Velociraptor Blue and in my opinion the much anticipated Dimetrodon another one that I definitely can't wait to get my hands on. So let's pop this out of the box and check it out. So here is our Carnotaurus now released from its packaging. Let me go ahead and get the feet kind of situated a little bit so that we can get it standing nice. And there we are. It honestly looks amazing here in person. Like wow is that ever an amazing amazing looking Hammond collection figure. I've been just anxiously awaiting a Carnotaurus to come from them and this has honestly exceeded my expectations straight out of the box it looks really really good the sculpt is fantastic the paint apps as well again even though they don't look as smooth as the prototype did like they are so nice on this and they look way better than if you go and look at like the uh the Prime 1 version, there's a Prime 1, like, 138 scale version out. Now, that's, like, a super high-end collectible version. It's, like, $100 or uh, maybe even a little more to purchase that Carnotaurus. That Carnotaurus is also about half the size of this, and uh, the paint apps aren't even close to as nice as what you see on this version. So, definitely got to give some props to Mattel for doing a fantastic job on not only the sculpt but also the paint apps of this figure. There is a little bit here where we could have had some more paint running out onto the tail, but overall I think it looks honestly incredible. So, let's go ahead and jump straight to a closer look at this and check it out from there. So, starting up here at the head sculpt of the Carnotaurus, you can see it absolutely resembles the Carnotaurus from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, honestly, to perfection. That head sculpt looks exactly as it did in the film. So, when it comes to screen accuracy, I think this might be the most accurate figure that we've seen in the Hammond collection. And I hope this is a sign of things to come when it comes to the you know, newer Hammond releases, because just like with this Carnotaurus, they have a Velociraptor Blue coming out that I feel like looks so much closer to what Blue actually looks like in the film. They didn't just re-release the previously uh, created Raptor. They actually took the time out to completely create Blue to look exactly as she does in the films. And you can see, again, the Carnotaurus honestly is like a step above what we normally get for the Hammond collection, if you ask me. One thing I will say, though, is you can see the glass eye. In my opinion, it looks all right. looks better than it did on the, uh, you know, Hammond Collection T-Rex because that was just a little bit iffy, but I still don't think it pops quite as nice as it should. It just seems like the eye kind of extends, like the plastic of the eye extends out further than it probably should to the point where the pupil is back so far, it's hard to really see it. And it's not that it looks bad, it just isn't my favorite thing about the figure. For instance, we can see the pupil right there, but once we turn it here, once you get to that point, you can't really see the pupil anymore. It's like pretty much gone. So uh, again, definitely something that even though I do like the use of glass eyes on all of the Mattel Hammond collection figures, I still think there's some fine tuning that needs to be done for those eyes to look perfect. 
But as you can lead through the face here of the Carnal Taurus, you can see the nostrils are sculpted out. Also, the skin texture looks rough and rugged, exactly as it does in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. You can also see we've got the horns up here. The horns are painted with a black. You also have some very dark tones leading through a large portion of the face, but then you also have like those reddish browns right here, as well as a little hint of like a lighter tone in the palette area of the Carnal Taurus. And it all looks again super nice in person, definitely nicer than I was expecting it to after kind of seeing it there in the window area of the box and then pulling it out it definitely looks really quite nice we do have an articulated jaw of course but you can see when you open it the upper jaw opens with it so you don't have the ability to only articulate the lower jaw it's like all together once you open the mouth they both go so you can get kind of like a uh you know, a little bit of difference as far as that goes but that right there's about as wide as the jaw will open the teeth are really nicely sculpted, definitely way better than the older Hammond Collection figures. The teeth have almost kind of like a genuine sharp look to them for the most part. You know, as far as what I would expect to see for a figure like this, I think they look pretty good. They're also painted with a white and uh, definitely the best teeth that I've seen on a Hammond Collection figure so far. They also are sculpted to the point where they don't look like they're all jumbled together. They do look like they're real teeth rather than just one solid piece. That's kind of the way it looks. Although when you come in here, you can see they are all one solid piece as you move through but they do look really nice when you look at it from out here you can also see the tongue sculpted out in there nice pinkish tone for the tongue and there's also a nice gloss coat for the inside of the mouth the detailing also looks pretty good here on the inside of the mouth on the upper side nothing over the top spectacular but pretty good overall you also can of course close the jaw and then move back into the neck and you can see we've got one spot of articulation right here at the top of the neck which can turn very nicely. We can get a pretty decent amount of mobility in that neck. You can basically see if we come up above how the uh, range of movement works. That's about as far to each side as far as what you're going to get when it comes to the range of movement. You can also see that we do have some of those you know, ridges and osteoderms picking up. You can also see that we have that dark tone, that blackish tone kind of leading through where you can kind of see like the orangish browns popping up here and there. And that is exactly as you see on the Carnotaurus in the film. We do also have this lighter tone here on the underside. On the lower jaw, we have a light gray. And I really love the smooth transition as you move down, as you do see some of those browns right there, and they fade in really nicely to that light gray of the lower jaw. As you move back, again, we continue to move down the course of the neck. You can see the scale, detail, and skin texture looks incredible. Yet again, we continue to have that really smooth transition to that light gray of the underside of the neck and throat. The detailing of the throat itself also looks pretty good. You do have another spot of articulation right down here in the neck and again that's about as far as you're going to get left and right when it comes to that area i don't know yes we absolutely can go up and down so that's about as far down as you're going to get it and then you can go up pretty high as well so definitely some nice smooth neck articulation for the carnotaurus i actually really quite like the neck articulation as you move along the back you can see again those clusters of osteoderms and stuff moving through the ridges moving along the spinal column the rough and rugged looking skin texture to the carnal torus as well as again that nice black coloration sort of uh, really nicely applied to the body here you can even see some of the areas where you have like the orangish brown kind of creeping through the black tones it's definitely a really naturalistic paint application as you move down here into the arms you can see the arms continue to remain that sort of orangish brown that we have for the large portion of the body of the Carnotaurus. You can still see that transition again is really nice down to that light gray. Uh, I'm not entirely sold on the arms of the Carnotaurus. You can see they're a little bit bigger than they should be, even bigger than they should be like compared to what you see in the film. Like if you look at this when it comes to accuracy of a real life Carnotaurus, they're definitely way too big. But if you look at it when it comes to what the Carnotaurus looks like in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, I still think they're a little bit too big. But we do have articulation moving down here. You can move the arms out away from the body. So our Carnotaurus sort of like pretends it's soaring in the air and then you can also move the arms forward and back and again that allows for some really nice posability in the arm area you also have the elbow which can go forward and back and yes can absolutely swivel but uh again the 
elbow articulation I think wasn't really needed and I get what they're doing they're trying to have as much articulation as possible and they normally do include articulated joints in the arms of the figures but for a Carnotaurus I really feel like we didn't need that but as you move down into the hand you can see the fingers are nicely sculpted there are nails for the Carnotaurus sculpted out but not painted now I don't remember for sure if the Carnotaurus in Jurassic World had fingernails I'm pretty sure it did and uh, I guess that's why we would have them on here. But in reality, Carnotaurus didn't have fingernails, so the lack of paint here on the finger uh, nails doesn't bother me at all because technically there shouldn't be nails there, so that almost gives it more of an actual accurate Carnotaurus look. But the fact that they are sculpted out but not painted, I guess you can still kind of look at as far as being a little bit of a downside if you wanted it to be as screen accurate as possible. But even still, that's just one minor little area that's missing paint. And the overall paint application of this, again, is absolutely phenomenal looking. But as you move back here into the stomach region, you can see some more skin wrinkles and skin folds and stuff. As you lead up, you can see some variation to the scales as far as the size and appearance. We continue to have more osteoderms as you can see them picking up here in the thigh region. Again, lots of osteoderms randomly showing up within all of those rough and rugged looking scales that we have for our Carnotaurus. You can also see more of that blackish tone leading down here into the leg as we move down. We've got the knee present right here as well as a very large big bulging calf muscle here on the back of the leg and then you move down into the foot sculpt of our Carnotaurus and that as well looks really nice you've got some nice scoots down the front of the foot down into the toes the nails are painted with a nice glossy dark gray and uh, no real color variation down here in the foot but it still looks pretty good we do have dew claws those as well are unpainted so another area of the nails that didn't get painted but the toenails being painted does look really nice and of course we do have articulation here in the legs so you can go forward and back pretty far actually like you can really really get that to move you can completely put the leg upside down if you choose to the legs also move out away from the body so you can get articulation as far as that goes then you've got the knee forward and back as well as kind of swivels yes definitely can swivel doesn't want to swivel so much in this direction there we go so now we have the leg almost completely turned around and then you've got two more areas of articulation as you move down here into the foot again you can go forward and back and again swivel and then you've got this one last spot of articulation in the foot which can go up and then really nicely bend it down definitely get you some really nice you know running poses and stuff for the Carnotaurus and then of course that area can swivel as well even though I don't really think that you would want to do that but the leg articulation is also very nice works really good and is really quite smooth and we can also see that we have proportionate sized feet for the Carnotaurus so honestly Mattel deserves a round of applause when it comes to that so excited to see much better looking feet on these dinosaurs as you move back up here toward the tail, you can see a few more skin wrinkles and stuff leading out. You can see that that light grayish tone here does fade away as we lead out toward the tail. And then once we lead out into the tail, you can see another area of articulation right here, which can go, you know, left and right, also up and down. And then you've got another spot right here, again, left and right, can also swivel. I don't think that can swivel. Yeah, actually it can. So you can swivel that. It's a little tough to swivel it, but there you go. You can definitely swivel that area as well. But as you lead out into this part, this becomes a wire tail. So now you can bend and fold the tail however you want just to get that last little bit of posability for the Carnotaurus. As you lead out, there's also kind of like a rubbery reel feel, uh, you know, which it usually is when it comes to those bendable wire tails. But as you lead out here into the tail, you continue to see again that black tone here sort of designing and patterning through. Once you hit this point though, it disappears and then you're left with basically just that kind of orangish brown moving out. The underside of the Carnotaurus also has some very nice detail and again that grayish tone is quite smooth as far as the application goes and you move through and then this side you're really not going to see much difference because again it is a fully posable figure. You're not going to see a lot of difference from one side to the other when it comes to the difference in detail. I actually think the eye somehow looks almost a little better on this side for some reason. 
than the eye did on the initial side. I don't know why, but it just kind of looks like I could see the pupil. It looks like a little bit better on this side. But as you move through, you can see everything looks just as nice, just as consistent as what we had seen on the first side. And uh, Mattel has delivered some pretty incredible Carnotaurus figures in their time as far as having the Jurassic World license. But this is unquestionably the best Carnotaurus that they have released so far. And uh, I think that just goes without saying because this is honestly fantastic. And I must say, even with these, you know, newly proportionate feet on the Carnotaurus, the balance is still really quite nice. Like, it definitely has very good balance overall, which is a huge plus for the figure. Mattel proving to, again, us, but also themselves, that they don't need oversized feet to stand. And I think that is pretty much definitive proof right there. But as far as a size goes on the Carnotaurus... If we actually move it a little bit further forward so that we can get the tail in screen. For a length, you were looking at about 17 and 3 quarter inches or about 45 and a half centimeters. And then for a height for the Carnotaurus, and this is just in the position that it's in, like which is kind of just a nice natural bend in the neck. It's not super high up. You're looking at about just shy of 8 inches, a little over 7 and 3 quarters, or about 20 centimeters almost on the dot. For a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line, as well as the Collect A human being down there. To give you an idea of the size there next to the Carnotaurus, you can see our Carno is quite a bit larger than everybody here. We've also got a Mattel Velociraptor and Dilophosaurus here next to the Carnotaurus to continue to give you an idea of the size. Then we have a comparison here next to your more average sized version of the Carnotaurus. This is actually the, uh, I think it's the Epic Attack version of the Carnotaurus, which is one of the most recent ones to release next to the Hammond Collection version. And then by the off chance that you might actually have it, here is the Sound Surge version of the Carnotaurus next to the Hammond Collection version. And then, even though this is a repainted Carnotaurus I had done quite a few years ago, we have the original Carnotaurus release from Mattel. This was the very first Carnotaurus they released uh, next to the Hammond Collection version, just in case that's one that you might have. Then, when it comes to some size comparisons to kind of sort out the difference in size of this newest size range, we have the smallest size range from Mattel, which is the Velociraptor. You can very clearly see, again, quite a bit smaller. We've also got the Hammond Collection Triceratops here next to the Carnotaurus. And then the next size range up, which would be the Metricanthosaurus size range. Again, you usually have like the Baryonyx, Metricanthosaurus, and a few others in this size range. We also again have another figure in that same similar size range as we have the Irritator here as well. And then a nice little meal for our Carnotaurus as we have the Hammond Collection Parasaurolophus. And then we have one final comparison as we have the Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex next to the Carnotaurus, which you can very clearly see again. Pretty substantial difference in size between these two, but the Carnotaurus is absolutely one of the largest uh, Hammond Collection figures there is, of course, next to the T-Rex and Brachiosaurus. So this brand new Mattel Jurassic World Hammond Collection Carnotaurus is absolutely fantastic and is without a doubt my favorite Hammond Collection figure that we now have in the line the sculpt on this is incredible and it absolutely 100 looks like the carnotaurus from jurassic world fallen kingdom the fine detail is fantastic it's extremely vibrant and again looks just as it did on the carnotaurus in the film so you can see mattel really did their homework on this one maybe more than any other figure they've released so far i would say this is absolutely the most screen accurate figure the only thing that is a little bit different in my opinion when it comes to the appearance compared to what you see on screen is the arms. The arms are a little bit too big on this compared to what you actually do see in the film, but I don't think that really takes away from the figure too much. On top of the incredible sculpt, you also have fantastic paint apps. The paint apps are really well done, and you can see Mattel again also put forth a lot of effort to give us a really nicely painted version of the Carnotaurus. There are still a few areas that could have used paint, like the dew claws, maybe a little more out onto the tail, and of course the fingers, you know, if they're gonna have nails, even though they shouldn't technically, they should be painted. 
but it's still not a big deal because those are all minor nitpicks because for the most part, I think the paint apps on this look incredible. They did do a great job of adding in different variation of color, just like the coloration of the face compared to the body. When it comes to the browns, you can see difference in those areas. And uh, again, a little bit of difference in the face as far as like a few various tones of color, even leading back into the body. You can definitely notice a difference slightly when it comes to various shades of that orangish brown. And of course, you also have the darker tone and the way that that patterning is applied is extremely smooth and very natural overall. So they did a great job as far as that goes as well. You also, of course, have the glass eye. I'm still not 100% sold on that quite yet, but I will say it definitely looks a lot better here on the Carnotaurus than it did on the T-Rex. But I think there's still a few little minor adjustments that could make those eyes a little bit better. You also have really nice articulation, really smooth articulation, which of course definitely gives you a lot of posability possibilities with the Carnotaurus, which is always a great thing. Tons of articulation moving through the entire body. We also have newly sculpted teeth for this that look way better than what we are getting with the older Hammond Collection figures. They look really nice as well. And the much more proportionate feet is just like the icing on the cake for this Carnotaurus, making this, in my opinion, not only my favorite Hammond Collection release, but the best Hammond Collection release so far. So if you are interested in picking one of these up for yourself, I believe the pre-orders are sold out currently on Target. Now, Target states that this will be releasing at the beginning of January, I believe, of 2024. I actually acquired this through Amazon because Amazon randomly put some up. I actually missed the first round. I was lucky enough to get an order in on the second round when it popped up. It stated that it was going to ship November 20th. And then it just randomly shipped out of nowhere. I have no idea how that works, what happened there, but I was not complaining because I now have the Carnotaurus here in my collection. Unfortunately, it has been out of stock since. I will include a link in the description to where you guys can, you know, check that out. And if you keep checking it, hopefully it'll come back into stock at some point and you can grab one for yourself. And at the very least, it'll be shipping, uh, you know, according to Amazon in November. So that's a lot earlier than Target. One way or another, if you have the chance to pick this up, I absolutely recommend it so make sure you do and also like comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next review thanks for watching